Us, us everyone, welcome to the Kyokushin Shuffle episode 50 and it has been saved for an almighty guest and thank you to everyone in regards to purchasing the Forever the Student ebook, uh, your gratitude and immense support, uh, I can't thank you all enough. So here we are to finish the year as such, we have uh, Sensei Richard Norton. Sensei, thank you so much for your time, how are you, how are things going at your end? Everything's really good. Thank you, Pat. And it's good to be with you. Um, awesome. I'm finally in relax mode. Just, yeah. just finished work on a Liam Neeson shoot that's been uh, going here in Melbourne. And that was that was a great experience, you know, yeah. just working and especially working with a lot of people aren't. So, but I'm yeah. also, I'm at the stage of life where it's nice to get on the couch with the remote control and just <laughs> kick back. Indeed. <laughs> And thank you again. You know, I contacted you a couple of months ago and you gestured politely that you were very busy as always. And, uh, but you have stuck to your word and I can't thank you enough. And to my listeners of the Kilkshin Shuffle, um, for, for, for Richard's sake, you know, we, that's my background, that's my pedigree, but the shuffle angle is having guests from all around the world, different skills, traits, and all the beauty that comes with martial arts. So thank you again for your time. Oh, my pleasure, Pat. Pleasure. Good so, uh, Richard, you've just gestured, you know, you've been busy doing this movie, you know, and, and, and again, a lot of us know your background and a lot of us have, you know, watched and listened to your uh, interviews and articles of, of, of so long. But how, how was uh, your last couple of months as such, you know, in, in how busy you are, just to give people an understanding of how, how busy you are, because you gestured it to me saying, listen, flat out, but I'd love to share with how, how busy you are. Yeah, well, you know, to be honest, before this particular Liam Neeson shoot, it wasn't that busy. It was actually great. And mm. I always preface by saying I, I totally get how tough the COVID situation has mm -hmm. been with lockdown and everything else. My wife had been through it. But, you know, considering we're pretty much homebodies at this stage of our lives, we don't go out a lot, you know, um, it hasn't been so bad for me. And I've I've loved the opportunity to get stuck into a lot of research and, yeah. and really looking back on notes and things like that, you know, particularly pertaining to martial arts and everything that I haven't had a chance to look at and getting a chance to revisit some of your past and realize why you mm. love that aspect of training. I think it's been great for me. Um, look, as I mentioned, you know, the last uh, two and a half months, I've been working on a Liam Neeson shoot called Blacklight. It's uh, been shooting in Melbourne. It's still shooting, actually. I think he's right. here for another week. Right. Uh, that's been a great experience doing the fight stuff. Liam's a wonderful, wonderful man. He's very open, very, um, he's quite private and everything because mm. he's you know, he's been around so long. Sure, sure. Uh, but it, it's a really nice man. And we, we just chatted about it for hours about all aspects oh, cool. of life. In fact, I even got into my whole Bible in the martial arts called Zen and Japanese culture. It's a book by DT Suzuki awesome. that I've had since I was a teenager. And, um, and that's a long time ago, by the way, but, anyway. <laughs> but you know, I, I ended up talking and he was fascinated. So I, you know, I bought a copy of the book and shared it with him. And oh, it's cool. kind of nice when you can get with people, whether it's movie stars or Liam's and, and be able yeah. to share a bit of your own passion and have yeah. them interested to be a part of that journey so that just finished my last day was yesterday on on that shoot um so all is good now we just relax and you know head, head to the back beach maybe and, and i'm back on the mat by the way teaching you know i teach excellent a few lots yeah you know, as us my friend has a taekwondo school in yes. Yarraville. I'm, I'm teaching brazilian jiu-jitsu there we had our last class last night and that's all good yeah um, so yeah just waiting for the new year to kick off and see what that presents oh awesome thank you for sharing that and that again there you have it that's just a brief indication of just what's kept the uh, sensei a bit busy here but you know we again we've we've got a background as such about the history of you and 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 one of the key questions I like asking just to start the ball rolling is because everyone has a fascinating angle as to how martial arts started in their life I mean, for someone like yourself, you know, in, in, in being born and raised in, in Melbourne, in Australia, is that correct? Correct. Yeah, in Croydon, Croydon. actually, you just yeah, in Croydon, just down the hill from me, which is unbelievable, to be honest. So, how you know, can you just give us a little bit of a, 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 a gesture there in how and why it inspired you? Because then let's kick into the other angles of, of what's happening. 
First of all, uh, Pat, apologies to anyone listening to this who've heard some of my other ones because I mm. do, you know, I often say, unless I'm going to reinvent a whole new childhood, no. the story remains the same, you know? So yeah. it, people have heard this, but it, it's not really, it's not that interesting a story in that I've, I've said, and I still say to this day that my interest in martial arts really started in the back of comic books. Okay. There used to be comic books that would advertise judo in those days because we're talking about 1961 is when I started wow. uh, with mm -hmm. the judo class, judo a, a kid moving into a house opposite to where I lived in Croydon and he was right. disappearing two nights a week and I asked him where he's going and you know, <laughs> we, I ended up starting judo and I was fascinated just because of these ads. And I always laugh because the ads are always about defeating six opponents yeah. in a flick of a wrist <laughs> until you get in the class. And I became like, I was very skinny. I was asthmatic right. as a kid and, and no real size. So I was like cannon fodder to the older teenagers in the class. And I was quickly, I was sort of questioning well, where does the defeating six people with a flick of the yeah, wrist? Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, it was my intro, and that's all we really knew about back then. The, okay, the, yeah. In hindsight, there were some karate clubs, but nothing, you know, mm. nothing to to really know about. And another kid that I w went to school with, along with this Morris who moved into the house, uh, was learning karate out of uh, Masayama's book. Oh, um, yeah. And yeah, and he was uh, John Rowe, his name was, and he he was, you know, in a form above me, you know, and we got to be friends. But he he would I remember him coming to school and we call him party tricks, you know, whether you're doing a board break or, or bending a pin with your knuckles or yes. building a little bit of callus, that, you know, and but it was enough to sort of go, wow, what the heck is this? You know, yes. it had a very martial arts had a very mysterious allure to it back then Indeed. we know now that it's just hard work like any other sport or or art or oh, in athletic endeavor but back then it was like reek with this is just superhuman stuff mm. you know kicking and baking breaking boards and everything else that somebody like Lyama sensei would do and oh, so he was you know i went to his home and he would have a punching bag there and he'd be practicing kicks and this was all out of a book Wow. Anyway, cut to uh, him finding out that there was a karate demonstration in Bayswater. Yep. You know, for those who don't know, about three miles back, miles back in those days from where we lived. And that was Tino Severano, Hunchy Tino, yes. who basically pretty much the, the godfather of martial arts as we know it in Australia. He was okay. Hawaiian Filipina. Yes. And he was demonstrating in his church hall and I went along and wow. I, I saw that and it was very basic jukumite or soft sparring of yes. uh, kata, you know, H pattern kata and some things. Mm. And I just went, oh my God, this is what I want to do. Heck and a lot of it was, was driven by the fact that I was smaller and skinnier and judo okay. was physically not as, um, well, I couldn't see it as being something that I could run with any time early in my life, unless yeah. I grew another 10 inches and <laughs> put on 40 kilo. But, and that's not to say it doesn't, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it, takes, yeah, yeah. it takes a considerable amount of training and skill set to really to negate the size yeah. and the strength yeah. factor. So, with the Goju, Goju Kai, as it was called, because our Goju yes. was more of the uh, Japanese version under Gogen Yamaguchi, yes. um, as opposed to the Okinawan version. Um, and I, I just saw it as something that's smaller, could rely on my speed. You yeah. stood up, you you used distancing with kicking and everything else. And I just I just fell in love with it. So I immediately joined up and that's that's what started my whole martial Beautiful. arts. Journey. And Thank and I want to say also that it wasn't please. martial arts for me was not, you know, you read so many stories of people getting beaten up by mm. gang, blah, blah. I didn't have any of that, you know. Sure. Yeah, you had normal neighborhood stuff, but it was really just something, and I know it sounds cliche, but I just believe it was something that I realized that I was meant to do with my life. How good. Because 60 years later, I'm still doing it, you know? Amazing. You can't beat that, so I'm happy. Thank you for setting that up. And because it's going to segue into many, many things that I'm so fascinated about. And being uh, one of the account managers at Blitz, I was always uh, across your articles and your, you know, all your knowledge as such, you know, and that's the, the best bit uh, I feel in having this conversation with you now and having a fun chat, like I just said at the start, is the immense knowledge that you've got, you know, and 
and then the saying goes, there's still more to learn. Have you, have you always <laughs> look at your face there? Like, yeah, you know, how, how do you, how do we get to this, you know, 60 years as such respectfully. And, and I could just see it in your eyes then. Yeah. Still going, still, still needing to learn, still wanting to train, still on the mat this week. Yeah, no. And that's the key. You know, I, I, I wish, and I always advise people, albeit it's not that difficult to find what one's life passion is. I, I started early that really drove my through line of life. Meaning right. I always say to people, all I wanted to do was be the best martial artist I could be. Okay. There are some that are far better. There are some that are not as good. That's irrelevant. You know, the through line was just that. And everything good in my life has happened as a result of that. You know, 25 years on the road as a personal bodyguard for some of, of the big rock and roll bands of the day what, 80 plus movies now in a 40 year oh, career yeah. is all as a result of the martial arts. So that's great. And I, 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 I'm very aware that it's a, it's about the journey. And again, we're talking very much in cliches as people here, but I always say that excellence is unattainable, but the journey toward it is not. And as long as you're always never wanting to accept mediocrity, never wanting to be just okay, just good enough. Oh, I'm as good as that one. So I'm okay. I believe the journey stops at that point. If you, if you wake up every morning and as a martial artist, the gift we have is that we can wake up every morning and being that we have the desire, we have the opportunity to learn something new yeah. every day with a technique, whether it's in kickboxing or jujitsu yes. or party or whatever, and, and keep that passion alive. And that's what drives me. I'm, I'm continually trying to find things in the arts that challenge me. Mm -hmm. I'm continually trying to find a different expression of martial arts. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean that I, I just do not want to be the same martial arts today that I was five years ago. Cause right. that would be boring for me. Yeah. You know, I, I want it to be an evolution. I love telling the story, Pat, of, Please. which illustrates this of, um, and some people might have heard this before, but I love it, is when Keith Richards, and again, people see Keith Richards, you know, they think sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and all that. Yes. But what they miss is the absolute passion of someone like Keith as a musician, mm -hmm. as an artist that just wants to be the best he can be. And anyway, he was asked... Um, in a press conference, I think, God, in the 70s when I was working with the Stones, you know, they said, a reporter said, do you get sick of jump singing or playing Jumping Jack Flash? You, right. you know, you played it thousands of times. Don't sure. you get bored with it? And again, I, as I say, his answer stuck with me to this day. When he said no, he said, because I'm still learning how to play it. Wow. He said, you might think it sounds the same. You might think it's a, just a, a copy of what I mm -hmm. did last. He said, every time I'm on stage, I'm trying to find a, just a slightly different way to hit a chord, a note. And I thought, oh, God, that's yeah. just a metaphor for what we do. So if we do a kata, awesome. you almost be robotic. But the point is, how can I just express it a little differently? Yeah. How, can I, how can I take it to a different level? And so artists, you know, we, we symptomize our, our, our art in different ways. We're punching and kicking or we're choking people with jujitsu, Keith is playing a guitar or whatever, or Linda Ronstadt is singing. The way it's symptomized is doesn't matter. The core way they get there and the passion that the artists have that still have careers like those people right. is what it's all about. So I just, I just encourage people to... You know, I, I, it's it's tough. Mm. People find it very tough to jump out of their comfort zone awesome. into an area that they're not really that au fait with. They're not really, you know, that takes guts. I call it daring to participate. Okay. You know, and, and I love when Benny Okida is Benny the Jet, you awesome. know, who's, uh, such a role model. I noticed when, when he does a seminar circuit that, if he gets the instructor of that club, the head sensei or whatever, yes. and that sensei is in the line on the mat doing drills with him, he makes a point of, of applauding that in right. front of the students as an example of not somebody that's going to stand with their arm folded right. and sit and just watch it because they're so shit scared they're going to get found out for what they don't know. No, they're willing to empty their cup and be mm -hmm. an example of the students. No, I still have things I want to learn. I want to improve. I'm willing to be a student. And I think that's huge. And that's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to do, you know, whether it's a stemmer, whatever it might be, something yep. that I can add 
to the expression of whatever it is I'm doing. That's what that's what keeps me going. I, I just love it. That's it unreal. excites me every day. You know, it's fantastic to hear that and, and love the, that little passion side of you because, again, we see you in so many avenues, but to catch you on that, again, I'm going to be tapping into the knowledge side of your expertise and experience. I mean, you segued nicely some of the amazing uh, sides of, you know, your years in the 70s and 80s. I mean, for our guests out there, you know, I do, you know, since they Richard has explained this many times. So we, I, I, I have a window here of an hour to, to get tap into this absolute powerful mind that you have. And what I want to uh, also just uh, ask you is that training, that training of your mental capacity because of the different angles that you have uh, expertise in, how are you always uh, leveling up, you know, you kind of gestured it then in how you do you do things, but in leveling up to be consistent as as well as you have been over sixty years, there is a you know everyone has a passion side, everyone has something else to it, but is there something that's made you continue to just excel at what you've been doing? Yeah, not well. Listen, that's that's an interesting question because mm. I think. The, the the leg up that I have in some regards is the fact that I started so young. Okay. Meaning that I, first of all, I had a reason not to drink. I had a reason not there to smoke. Go. I had a reason to yes. watch. I started fasting when I was like 14 years of age, Amazing. you know. Yeah, right. mm. I would eat six days a week. I got interested in all aspects of health merely because it meant I could maybe be a little better on the mat that following week. Sure. Um, and so my life has been molded around that as opposed to somebody, say, starting martial arts later in life. Mm. I've already established certain patterns of health and behavior and work, and they try and fit a class in. Yes. That, I believe, would be a lot more difficult, you know. And I, I was also very fortunate that my passion for the arts resulted in a career that was sustained my passion. Sure. The movies for me were not so much about doing a movie as much as it was a way of making an income that would allow me to spend more time on the mat, you know, yeah, yeah. and be involved. So do you understand? So yes, it yes. Was the work was the prime thing. And then the martial arts was when I could fit it in. It was mm. the other way around for me. Um, and that's, well, that's I, 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 uh, I'm also a believer in evolution. I, oh yeah, you know, I often say about traditional arts, one of the not problems, but mm. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, I've got to be careful here. I don't want to tick people of course. off. But one of the problems with traditional arts is by the mere nature that the traditional they want to keep them the same. They tend to in boom kata explanation the way they do a technique because they want to keep it the way it was a hundred years ago. Which, which is great from an art point of view, I get that, but mm. it takes away for me a bit of the evolution. I like, as I said, I do a systemic arts with, um, you know, um, with Alex Kostic. He's a Serbian guy that Matt Ball, one of our Zendikai people brings out. And I just, it blows my mind because what yeah. they do with his form of systema is so contradictory to what I would do with focusing a punch or whatever. They're, right. they're very flow, they're very yes. like and I, you know, and I say to, to Alex, look, you know, I could easily just rationalize, no, that's not what I do. And that mm. doesn't work mm. for me. And just shut it down. What yeah. I, mm. I do is I said to Alex, Alex, I don't have a time to learn a new art, but I just want some principles in what you mm -hmm. do that you can add and make what I'm doing that a little bit better, whether it's the softness of it. You know, as you know, in Goju, there's a lot of soft movements mm. and there's a lot of linear, very hard movements. So you get that yin and yang. So it's really just exploring and making, yes. making the training. In. But but what I'm saying is keep up to date. I mean, we have the the value mm. today that we have with technology is anything oh, and everything in in the sense <clears throat> of a knowledge base is there at the click of a mouse. Correct. You can find stuff. I just you know I just ordered a book called. Um, <laughs> What's it called? It's called. I wrote it down. The Rise of Superman. Okay. It's just something that Amazon sent me, and it's all about flow state. That whether it's oh, wow. great, big wave mm. surface or whatever. <laughs> I, immediately, I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to read this book. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Like ten minutes before we go and think, it's all about the technology of them, what they've discovered about mindset and what makes a, an elite ath athlete elite rather than just mediocre. Wow. And that's all I mean is don't, <clears throat> don't be in a class 
and kind of be fed the information for your instructor who may or may not be up to date. That, that doesn't matter. Sure, sure. But be ready, be your own teacher, be your own instructor, you know, access the knowledge that's out there and, yes. and keep, keep, it's like your computer. I mean, how many up to software or updates? So you keep doing that's a right. software update on your understanding of physicality of the integration of mind, body, and spirit. There's so much knowledge that was not available even when I started that is available now. And Correct. I think if people can <clears throat> hop into that and it just, I just get excited by it. Yeah, no, you, you're 100% correct in the, in this, that last point there for, for us younger generation towards um, not just being naive, um, you know, and I, 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 I put the angle of when we went to um, uh, Japan, when I first went to Japan in, in 2004, and my Xi'an, Billy had a, a VHS of, uh, you know, Sosai and Xi'an Bobby Lowe's uh, self-defense Goshen Jitsu technique, and it was gospel. It was, oh, can we take this? No, you don't touch, you know, and just now that's up on YouTube, my students, I said, have you, have you watched it? Oh, you know, whatever. But it was like, what? No, back when, you know, so the, yeah. that, that side of it, and like you just reminded us all, hey, you guys can't be too naive. You got it at a click of a finger. And, um, you know, the generations before us had had a book or had to, you know, invest, you know, into this. You well, know? Even that. I mean, I always said like with Hunchy Dino, we learned Goju when he wanted to teach it, in the order he wanted to teach right. it. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you couldn't go home and suddenly, it's, I'll give you an example, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, why I love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is, as opposed to even more of the Japanese version is that it's evolving by the bloody week. Yeah. I mean, with the way people are evolving out, some stuff that, you know, I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with Hicks and Gracie uh, oh, wow. in the late eighties before the oh, UFC. Awesome. And stuff that we did even five years ago, some of it is now obsolete because yeah. people have worked out counters to it. And yeah. these young kids, Lucky Giles, people like that, you yeah. know, that, yeah. that are completely there. They're just, they're updating software up there. There you go. Yeah, and you've got to be okay with that. You know, I'm I'm looking at guys like Hodger Gracie. They're competing now, and I'm continually mm. looking at where what they're doing. Luckily, yeah. I have a really good fundamental understanding, so it's not that hard for me to take on sure. new expression of a particular armbar or triangle. Sure. Or whatever. But the point is, you need to be okay with being a student. You've got to look at these guys mm. that have taken mm. that level, like leg locks, and we didn't do leg locks. Yeah, yeah, minimally. Yeah. It was almost like dirty pool. Your jiu-jitsu wasn't any good if you had to take the legs. Now, of course, you know, to have a ground game without without a leg attack system is you're just totally obsolete. Yes. But you see again, half the game. You can okay with that. Hence, updating. You know, martial arts should always be a product of your environment. And we're not Japanese on horseback, you know, fighting. <laughs> yeah, so, battle, right? yeah, of course. We're worried mm -hmm. about a guy in a bar in Chapel Street, you know, mm -hmm. outside swinging at you and, it, and it's it's relevant to sort of factor that into your training and your 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 expression of the arts not that it always needs to be reality based because mm. we get a little tired of oh well does it work in the street and it's like well that's not always the reason you do it you know there yeah is such a thing as art personal meditative aspects of movement and and precision and and discipline within your own body and i because i said a little while ago that if if, if stuff like that, if the mind body aspect of your arts is not of relevance, if all you're worried about is the combat aspect, the physical, I, would, mm. I would hesitate to say that 98% of people that I've taught have probably never ever had a street fight, which means if my whole emphasis was on reality based, that's mm. kind of a bit of a waste of a lot of the opportunity <laughs> to develop them in other aspects of their life, right? Sure, sure. I mean, you know what it's like. Carter yes. is just, for, yeah, does it work? And they say, who cares, you know? No, it's, it, it's, the, it's the discipline of movement and doing it every day and how can you express it better that, that develops you as a human being. And hence, it's applicable to so many other areas of your life. Hence, my favorite saying, it's not the two hours on the mat, it's the 22 hours off the mat. How are you as a human being? Amen. How do you relate with your family, your friends, and society? Yeah. And if we can give life lessons on the dojo mat that helps in that way, we've done a good service because it's um, it's yeah. 
because it's just a bit of a waste, you know? Yeah. And, and I would then argue, as I've said too, mm. that in that case, what's the point of table tennis or tennis or golf? Yeah. You're hitting a stupid little ball in a hole <laughs> or over a net. And yet people do it. They love it. There's a there's a passion for it. And it, it's got all its rewards in a whole different way. So, you know. Yep. And keeping open mind. And a gr another great reminder there of the 22 and 2. I like that. You know, two hours in the dojo mat, off the mat, there's so much more to, you know, I'm going through that phase with, with the, with the, again, my students in a younger generation angle. I said, do not follow the principles of us with recovery look at it now so in depth yeah. so much knowledge towards recovery recovery now as martial artists with full contact kilk shin karate and and then students just going home and eh, and then i'm like hold on have you looked up this have you started to progress your recovery a lot better you know yeah. it's such an important part as well yeah no it, and again otherwise we and you know yourself uh, was, Pat, and i know mine saying so that there's so many Truckers, you know, out there that they they dress up in colours and rank and validate. I, I, I have a saying: Heaven forbid they unfold their arms and get found out for what they don't know. Mm. And they they can sound like the frigging Dalai Lama or incarnate on the mat. And then as soon as they leave, they're absolute dicks, you know, with the way they behave. Um, so you go, you know, if you're if you're living code of code of bushido and you Was understand the honour the integrity that goes with that that code and yet you're still lying to your wife you're still fiddling your taxes right. you're doing all that well then you're not, you're not living that bushy code was, you know what i mean it's a holistic yes. it's not just going on a mat and role playing you know it's easy to get on the mat and be all recite it's all living master but do you live it you know who 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 i again to quote Please. ben it is one of Benny the Jet's great things I learned from him when somebody comes up to him and says, Oh, look, you know, this technique, and da da da. He said, Well, wait a minute, before you start teaching me that or, or, or telling me about that technique, he says, What personal life experience have you had with what you're trying to show me? Okay, did you just learn it like last night? And now you're teaching it though you have a life knowledge, you know, have you pressure tested? Have you lived it? I think that's a very, very valid yeah. way to that stuff, you know, uh, internalize it and, and make it a part of you before you get on the mat and start teaching it like it's gospel. I think there's a lot of injustice done there with instructors teaching, for instance, how to survive a street fight when they've never had a fight in their lives. Fight. That doesn't yeah. mean they couldn't do it. I get that. But yeah. beyond, like if I teach nice stuff, I will say, look, this is theory for me. Yes. I believe it would work, but I've never been in a knife fight. Right. You know? so yeah. how, how do I know? But I believe with my experience, this would help should the situation occur. I just think that's yeah. what, just, just be honest with, with your knowledge base and where that's coming from. You know? Yeah, I have a, I have a user saying, be a product of the product, you know, and um, yeah. You know, that, thank you for sharing bits of that. You know, sense that you, so, you know, exceptional um, uh, take on, on, on inspiring most of us there and just reminding us of, you know, being honest with ourselves internally, right? And, um, you know, with what's occurred uh, over the past year and it's challenged a lot of, you know, martial artists, being, meaning in, in respect of not being able to train, having to, you know, like BJJ haven't been able to get on the mat because of this issue, because of all the above. So then the other side of it was, well, be start to take your uh, trainings to other means, you know, reading book, you know, so how, how, you know, and you kind of shared with us in light at the beginning of the podcast, how you've then gone back into your logs and your journals uh, or, or, you know, some of your uh, readings and gone, whoa, you know? No, I know. And, uh, you know, I was doing Zoom classes for Zendokai, you yeah. know, punching kata, you know, our breathing oh. show and, you know, as you go on, there's only so many hours a day. You don't necessarily focus as much time. But I was going through all that and going through lots and you know, I keep lots of notes, you know, at the time. And awesome. I just suddenly was like, oh, now I understand why I love doing that so much. Mm -hmm. Wonderful to revisit. And what you're saying about COVID, I mean, it's, hopefully that's what we train for is to have a warrior mindset. Yes, we're yes. under assault, you know, by a virus. Do you curl up in a fetal position and moan, groan, and whine, or do you get on with it? And do you look at, well, what can I do? There are so many things you could do at home in your backyard or anything that don't 
need or don't require the perfect training yes gym and yes and bags to punch you know that's that's a cop out that's what benny again would call a psychological crutch right. to not participate fully anymore well i don't have the equipment well i can't yeah. get a whip bullshit I'm yeah horrible. i better wear a mask it's like shut up you know <laughs> Whining again on over. You're on a battlefield, you know, and your leg was blown off, and you have the option of dying or crawling somewhere and maybe surviving. That's what makes a difference with a lot of these special forces dudes, you know. And it's a mm. mind, I believe, as martial artists, we're trying to develop that mindset. I hate I just get sick of people whining. It's like shut the fuck up. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, a hundred yeah, and, and and the reminder of that and, and and when you gesture it in that in that manner. It's 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 not offensive. Well, for me, when I and I say it to certain people, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm trying to give you the facts. I'm trying to tell you, you got to you got to snap out of this. You know, come on now. There's so much there for you. Yeah, because what's the alternative? That's the thing. And and again, I I absolutely need to say, I understand if people have lost a loved one to COVID or their businesses. Us. Please, I totally get that. Us. You know, I totally get that. But still, what's your alternative to crawling up a little feed position and just giving up on life? You know, yes, mm. that's an option. For me, it's not a suitable option. I'm just saying, yes. just look, you know, my wife is like that. Judy, you know, she Judy had an accident and nearly killed her. She was given a 2% chance of living Ooh. in the Amazon jungle when she was with LB Mangles. She, she is such a teacher for me because she is the absolute wow. cliche of the glass half full. She'll mm. never moan about what she lost her ability to read, all sorts of stuff. She just looks at what she has. Ah, oh, it was meant to happen because now I'm more creative, blah, 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 blah. So if I get a little whiny about maybe getting tired or having to work, she'll remind me and I go, yes, absolutely, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Even waking up and remembering who I am is probably a good, good thing. Uh, very good. Uh, Zensei, you know, the amazing people that you've come across in your life and all the above and the influences of so many, you know, um, it, when it comes to the, the martial arts side of it, you know, how have you been able to balance so much of the different, you know, the different influences of people and, and from Goju to Benny the Jet to so many influential people. I mean, it's young Cameron Quinn said to say hello, mind you. Uh, I told him yesterday I was having a chat, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's just all these influential people. And what I'm gesturing there is, I, I, I built the, the shuffle to put this out there to many to show others how there are so many influential slash people that can help support them in whatever capacity, like what's happened with COVID. It's many, many of my listeners have gone, thank you so much. I've just learned this from this person and learned that from that person. How have you balanced to an extent all the people that you've come across, you know, and, and, and with their knowledge, have you just, you know, continue like it's it's such a fascinating because there's people out there that don't even have that can't find that they don't even know where to start looking you know they're they're struggling with things like you know um of that i uh, look i i'm i'm a bit of a believer in this no such thing as coincidences okay you know i believe there are so many people around people yeah that have to to teach so much should we be open and accept the fact that there are lessons to be learned you know uh -huh. there's, there's there's a thing about you know when you get a, a an acting script you know mm. the is that say i've been given a role of pete in this action i read through the script and i go bullshit 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 my line my line bullshit bullshit, <laughs> bullshit my line. a lot of people are so full of their own substance you know it's the old saying of empty your cup to taste somebody else's tea i think the first thing is to really be aware of listening and really being aware of mm. being open to the fact that there are lessons to be learned not always and by the way it's it's like a role models i often say about role models mm. whether it's benny whether it's chuck norris or whatever role models yes they're there to inspire you you know to as to what you could achieve in aspects of your own life but I also look at role models as learning a lot of what I would never want to do with my life. And now I'm not going to divulge what those things are, but I've looked at some role models going, sure. I would never want to behave like that or do that. Indeed. Ever. So I, I'm well aware of that. So that's a lesson. Yes, yes. Right? yes. In behavior. But then you look at what inspires you about them or what attracted to you, them to you in the first place. And and try and figure out, yeah, is there a lesson there for me? And sometimes it's not, you know, but maybe yep. 
maybe. I always, you know, you hear me talk about uh, people like Benny because I always, every conversation I have with Senza Benny, I always get something that I keep yeah. away from it. There you something go. It gives me something about a bit of a life lesson. But you've got to also be okay with shutting your own mouth and <laughs> being open to that input, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, that's, and that's hugely important. Um, yeah, because of the people you've been, uh, you know, you're around and as they say, you know, show me, show me five of your mates, I'll show you you, you know, and, and, you know. I mean, it's it, actors, including, you know, I, I, yeah. I call it being around people at the top of their game, you know, yeah. whether it's Scarlett Johansson, and here I am name dropping, but. No, go for it. <laughs> Robbie, Will Smith, I've got to spend so much time with these people and it's a great chance to look at them as people, not as movie stars. Yes. And to look at them and figure out, well, what do they do that symptomizes, you know, their success and helps them be what they are? That's been an incredible opportunity for me to see the person. Like being, you know, Chuck Norris was best man at my wedding. He's always been wow. such an incredible role model because he's also been an example to me ever since I started training at Chuck's house in 1980 or late 79. Yes. There's never a time that he wasn't also searching for somebody. Oh, look at this guy, Rich, maybe. Okay. Let's bring him in and do a class and see what Unreal. he's got. Yes. George Dillman or whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, he, he, so he was a good example for me and I took a lot of that on board, you know. Um, I appreciate you sharing that because that, that that's what I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I, again, the name dropping is, is, is your life in respect of who you're around. And that's what I wanted people to understand and listen to, you know, it, it, the people that you've been around, you're still continuing, you know, they're still taking their level up. They're still rising the tide. And if they rise it, you rise it, then you're sharing that knowledge to people People like myself and the listeners out there, which I appreciate. Yeah, and you, you know, you mentioned Colin Cameron. I mean, I, I know he gets on, you know, uh, uh, Cameron Queen and people like that. They get on the mat, they do a bit of grappling. That's not Kyokushin per se, but mm -hmm. you get examples of great people that, again, are never satisfied. And that's, that's the key. Just don't be satisfied where you're at. I don't mean get neurotic and everything, but yeah, yeah, yeah. How, I, how can I improve whatever it is I'm doing and express myself? with a little more excellence, you know, each day. And uh, a lot of the people, it's like, you know, and I, I, mm. I love stories like Chuck, you know, Chuck's whole movie career. He, he trained Steve McQueen for years, yes. who's a legendary actor. And Chuck gave up his uh, karate schools at one stage. And, he, and I'm paraphrasing, he's having like lunch or whatever with Steve and Steve says, Chuck, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with your life now? I mean, you've sold your karate schools and Chuck's like, oh, well, Steve, I, I don't know, you know, I haven't really thought about it. They said, have you ever thought about acting, you know? And sure. Chuck, he laughed and went, Steve, I don't know anything about <laughs> acting. And like, he thought it was funny. And Steve said, wait a minute. So for years, you've been telling us with the arts, you can achieve anything, you can learn nice. to focus, you can do a board break. It's about, you know, achieving continuity, yes. all that sort of stuff. And he said, and now you're telling me you can't do that? And Chuck said, he, he kind of laughed and he said, well, I didn't say I couldn't do it, you know? Right, 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 yeah. And that was a lesson, you know, of how we can sometimes limit ourselves and they, uh, yep. took the plunge and the rest is history, you know? He, he had an incredible career on screen. He's never. And, I, and I, you know, I often talk about what we call filtering, where we will look at people, and by the way, it's not a bad thing from a survival point of view to judge. You know, you, you look at people and you assess, is this person a danger to me? Are mm -hmm. they, you know, all this sort of stuff. But the filtering means that often we'll look at, say, another martial artist, and they might be a bit overweight or whatever. And yes. you might start feeling, oh, God, he doesn't look too good. Mm -hmm. you know, how could he be? And by doing that, you've already sort of cut off the opportunity of an, of an incredible lesson from an sure. amazing artist you know because you don't know what's happened in his life that's caused him to gain a bit of weight or sure. whatever sal ebenez you know who's tino's partner that came out that's a little while after sal who uh, after tino who was just amazing you know as a mentor sal came out he was a little overweight we had our first um uh, summer camp at falls creek in the 60s and you know, Sal so would get out of breath and start puffing. And so I was very aware you start judging. Oh, okay. Really? Only when Sal suddenly got the cobwebs off because he'd had a car condition, got the uh -huh. cobwebs 
off, suddenly he became at cell the amazing martial artist, and you go, oh my God, okay. how this guy? And you're aware that that filtering probably stopped you accessing or sure. up to this person when you first had the opportunity, if that makes sense. Yeah, well. no, it does. No, indeed. You know, one one side of it with um, your mindset here, uh, Sensei, was with the uh, opportunities that, uh, you know, present themselves to you and the, um, the, the side of you making a call or making a decision that was, you know, to a degree of angling you, you know, you would have had multiple opportunities because of what you've been doing over so long to go left or to go right. Now, whether it was, you know, uh, and I don't, I, I don't want to put the words in your mouth, but, you know, in sharing with others, when the, the situation does arise, when there is a opportunity to go left or go right, where was something that gave you that, oh, I could have, and I, but I went this way or I went this way and look at the benefits and look at all the glory that's come with it because of your hard work as such. Yeah, I think you've got to look at the upside of what you did decide to do, but there's lessons learned too from maybe it not being a good decision. Yeah. And that's the key to learn from that and go, okay, well, maybe I should be a little careful about making so, you know, a decision similar to that in the future. You know, you learn from it. And, you know, because it's a bit of a gut thing. You know, I look at my career, you know, a lot of the movies I did, I mean, I'm not delusional to think they're amazing works of art. They were just fun. They were what we did in the day. There were ways for me to make an income. There sure. were ways for me to be on set with other amazing martial yeah. artists, small budget action films. So I don't regret in any way those decisions. I believe, yes, I could have maybe held out to do A-grade movies. Maybe I wouldn't have worked it as much. Maybe it wouldn't have been a successful run for me. But I also realized that Again, the passion was martial arts, not acting. If, if I had, was as passionate about acting, I would have been in an acting class six days a week, mm, mm. not on, on the mats, do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. So I look at those decisions and I, I learned not to give myself a hard time about things okay. like that, mm, but mm. more assess those decisions and again, apply them maybe to future decisions because it's, it's um, mm. you know, it, yes, it, it's, you know, life is about living and learning. You know, I, I believe yeah. we're here for trials and tribulations. You know, if it was all okay. euphoric, I don't believe we'd have any reason to be in this earthly form here on sure. Earth. In the place. So accept the yin and yang, you know, the yeah. hard and the soft and the bad and, and get on with the journey. And yeah, I mean, there's, there's some, no, I, I can't even think of anything that I look at and I go, oh God, if only I had done right. that. That's yes. cool probably would be but i'm not going to really beat myself up about that i'm yeah. i'm happy being, yeah. i'm happy with the friends and the acquaintances and life experiences yeah that I've been, and uh i think that's that's important it, for me. It, was it what would it fall into the just going with the flow you know and 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 and, and with that you know uh, adapting well, to yeah here's the key Pat, that, you know, I, I did a course once with a guy called Robert, Robert Kiyosaki, who has Rich mm -hmm. Dad, mm -hmm. is a the book. famous uh, book, and he did lecture series. And basically, he talked about, you know, when he started, he's developing his real estate portfolio. Mm -hmm. Got an agent to drive him down this street, and there was a, something like 10 houses for sale. And he said to the agent, I'll take it. And the agent said, which one? He said, all of them. Right. And basically he's saying, my, his spirit went, what the fuck? <laughs> but now he said his inner self had to figure out a way to make that work. And yeah, okay. it's a way that I, I, you know, I've done that with, you know, there's a couple of projects I've just said yes to as we speak that sure. scare the crap out of me because okay. it's a bit out of my comfort zone. But I've realized the first step is to say yes. Right. And then figure out, you know, take, take it on and figure out how to do it. Because the easiest thing is to say no yeah. and step away from it out of fear. You know, Customato, I love to, awesome. and again, I don't know whether he coined the phrase, but Tyson's trainer, mm. you know, saying, a fear is the friend of extraordinary people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, awesome. Fear actually is a motivator. You know, if I do a seminar at Chuck's convention, I've got 300 black belts, that scares the crap out of me because I know each time um, they're going, oh, I want to Norton slow down a little bit. Or, or uh, to... <laughs> but what the fear of that makes me do is prepare more, train harder, yes. get sharpen up. So I come and at least be on the mat with the best exam 
example of me that I can that I can do. And and for years about that, you know, I love to tell people about uh, Nicole Kidman. I saw her in an interview mm -hmm. about movie roles, and she said most of the time it scares the crap out of her. And the roles she takes are the ones that scare her most because it propels her to more preparation on character and everything. It just pushes her to a higher level rather than just sleepwalk yes. your, your way through something you just feel comfortable. If you're not uncomfortable, right? you're not learning, you know. Unreal. Oh, Unreal. That's the key. Uh, very special. Thank you for that. Yeah, that's uh, some amazing, I call nuggets, you know, from, from experienced people like yourself. Such a beautiful thing to have a chat to you, Sensei. So, you know, we've got about 10 minutes left and thank you for your time again, you know. So I, I wanted to head down this last path of, of the last 10 minutes is the, you know, we've, we've, we've uh, brought up the evolution of martial arts, you know, we've, we've all had to, you know, we all now need to adjust and evolve the mystique of it as such. I've, I gesture as well is no longer in that um, vein of walking up to dojos and, and peeking through the doors and going is what's going on in here. It is shown worldwide. We have commercial, we have social media, we have, uh, you know, massive leagues, sport leagues now that are on, you know, free to air TV. Now, the question for you is how you uh, invested as a fan, are you, you know, because of your work, because of your uh, involvement in and the environment you're in, do you see this as a, as a beautiful thing? Do you, what, what, what's the, what's the angle that you um, love about what's, what's changed from when, you know, 1960, 70, 80 to two, two, 2020? It's a beautiful thing. You know why? Because there's not a cool. damn thing I can do about it. <laughs> you can evolve whether I like it or okay. not. You yep. can be in the camp of resistance Oh, it's not traditional, this and that. Or you just go, you know what? Let's let's. There's some wonderful aspects of yeah. MMA and every mixing martial arts, for instance. You know, it just 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 be an open book and accept the reality, the evolution of the arts. Mm. Again, you don't want to become a dinosaur. You know, well, I don't anyway. Mm. You know? mm. Even with my work with movies, with doing choreography, I also have to update my knowledge bank. Even regard that. That's. That's a side product of looking at MMA, Sistema, you know, mm. what, Judo, Aikido, you know, Greco-Roman wrestling. Oh, is there something I can use in my line of work? I mean, like I'm, in other words, I'm, I find a reason to keep my interest in, in aspects. Mm. But I still say that a lot, of, a lot of martial artists will resist things like that because of fear, because of the fear that they're not at the stage where they have the endurance, the energy or, or the youth to really access that knowledge so the mm. best way is to find a reason that it's not good no it's yeah. that's not that's, that's not it well bullshit it is you know again it's a product of today's environment and yes there, there are aspects that disturb me a little bit you know sure. with the violence the fact that we're getting back to gladiatorial days and really it's all about not so much about the athletes about the armchair experts who sit on their butts and you know drink beer and just get yeah. off and from the crap out of each other there's, you know, of course, there's that side of, of, of what's happening today. But again, there's so many good things. And, and again, yeah. it's taken our knowledge base of all things physical with the arts, you know, and athletic prowess. I mean, some of these MMA guys, the conditioning and their skill set that covers so many bases is, is phenomenal, you know, and commendable. They're just elite athletes. And you know, I look at that and think that's fantastic, you know. Oh, that's great. That's mm -hmm. cool, yeah. And, I mean, you know, because of the, uh, again, for the listeners, I, I could have angled this chat with Sensei into all his years as security guards for the famous people. He shared that, you know, and, and we respected that at the beginning. Um, I told Sensei that that's not the angle I was heading towards because if you want to listen to that, please do. But the inside uh, tapping that I was, that we've got today in, in 50 odd minutes has been very special, you know, and I want to thank you for that, Sensei, because there's many of us that look up to you. There's many of us that uh, see the hard work and the, and the pathway that you've given many. And I know one of my students has gone to your seminars, Christian, and he, you know, was uh, influenced by you immensely. And I want to share that. And I'm sure you probably hear it often, but um, I wanted you to just understand that um, you do have a big influence on many of us uh, across this angle of not just as a martial artist, but someone that continues to level up and take themselves to, you know, wherever it takes you, you know? So I just wanted to acknowledge that before we ended. 
Thank you, Pat. And, and again, I would encourage any martial artist out there, if you can find a way that your art can help educate or enrich other mm. people's lives. And, you know, you, we talking about bodyguard work, you know, I, you know, Rolling Stone did an article on me way back in the 80s. And it was an article about, basically about rock and rollers like Ringing the Ronster, James Taylor's band, Fleetwood Mac, coming off the road in better shape than when they went on. Right. Which in those days, was unheard of. Yeah. <laughs> well. Wow. But I feel a great part of that, you know, because mm -hmm. I used to get them into working out each day, ABBA, mm -hmm. you know, to work them out every day. And what a tough job, right? But, <laughs> you know, you know, to be able to sort of use the art, to, you know, to, to sort of help them with their fitness and change. You know, James Taylor, for instance, eventually said to me, said, exercise, Richard, has become my addiction, you know, because he used to have addictions and stuff. Sure. I'd set up a bag before he went on stage i went to martha's Vineyard, train him a little bit there so again to to be able to sort of pass on some of your own personal life experience onto other artists like that yeah is very rewarding and you know i feel thankful for the opportunity to have done that i mean even even mm. teaching mick jagger reverse punches at four o'clock in the morning after a concert i mean who gets to do that, right? <laughs> and that's the cool bit, you know, and just you just, again, now now I feel like asking all the questions about all the back end and the green room stuff, but. Again, you know, there's, there's, it's an, it'll be an interesting conversation about, because I'm sort of doing a bit of a book based on lessons learned, as I said, from people at the top of their game, whether right. it's Dave Bowie or, or oh. you know, Nick and all this. So there, there's some, there'd be an interesting conversation, which, happy to have it some later date, you know. People well, you know, uh, if you are working on the book, is that something you're going to be committing yourself to on top of everything else? <laughs> 10 years to finish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I appreciate you, you know, teasing us with some of that. And yeah, indeed, you know, uh, uh, you know, the shuffle is something that I want to build into, you know, everyone understanding and appreciating where people are at in their lives as such, and 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 everyone gets to look forward to it. But you know, I hope the book. Uh, oh, geez, I, I don't, it is going to be like a thousand pages. This, I think you're more of a. I think you're going to have to star yourself in your own movie. I'm sure you probably heard that many times as well. That'd be boring for me, but maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but you played pretty well so um you know again for everyone out there you know we can't thank sensei enough you know a busy busy schedule um you know sensei merry christmas to you um and to your family keep up the amazing work thank you so much for your time wonderful i appreciate the opportunity to come and chat and again happy to do it again good on you thank you so much also everyone look forward to uh speaking to you guys again uh look out for forever the student ebook and thank you to sensei richard norton Oops. thank you mate please